The dry as a needle gun is one of the most important firearms in history. There are a couple of reasons for it. One is it's the first bolt action rifle when we think of bolt actions, but also it was a cartridge gun and it allowed the Prussians to dominate much of Europe. In the early part of the 19th century, most military arms were muzzle loaders and muzzle loaded smooth bores. The main reason there being A, they were inexpensive, and B, they could be loaded fast. However, there were some uh, breech loaders, uh, but they were expensive, complicated to use, and uh, basically took a lot more training than a regular smoothbore musket. However, uh, in 1841, or Prussian actually, uh, Nicholas von Dreise came up with a very, very, very ingenious bolt action, self-contained breech loading cartridge firearm. Dreiser's design was recognized as being something potentially useful for the military. In, in the Prussian state, some of the Prussian royalty recognized that this unique design that he had come up with first would make a really decent sporting arm. And so Dreiser started developing some of the sporting iterations of his concept, his bolt action concept, in the late 1820s and the early 1830s. Well, by the mid 1830s, it's clear that this bolt action breech loader concept has some utility to it. And in 1835, 1836, there are trials that are run with Dreiser's bolt action mechanism alongside the flintlock muskets used by the Prussian Empire at the time. And when you think of a flintlock working against a bolt action rifle, it's, it's incomparable. And they recognized that there was a benefit to this. There was a key problem with the Dreise design, and it was one he had to overcome before it could be a truly utilitarian military arm. And that problem was the fact that his gun required the use of an extraordinarily long firing pin. The cartridge was so designed is in that you had a powder in the rear, there was a sabot in the center, which contained kind of an egg-shaped bullet, at the rear of the sabot, there was priming compound. The firing pin was a long, thin needle. And when you put the cartridge in, you close the bolt, you cocked it, and when you pull the trigger, this needle would go up in through the powder chamber, hit the priming compound, and discharge the cartridge. Worked very, very, very well. But like most things, it did have a couple of drawbacks. The key to the needle rifle is its cartridge, the Tri-Spiegel. Now, there were paper cartridges, obviously, being used by militaries around the world, but what the Tri-Spiegel does is it has really a strange-shaped bullet, uh, and then there's a primer on the back, or priming compound, and then the powder charge. And the needle actually passes through the powder charge, hits the primer, detonates the powder. So, just imagine you had your firing pin inside your cartridge case when you set your gun off. And that's exactly what is happening. And of course, black powder is extremely corrosive. Uh, so it was hard on the needles because they're being subjected to the force of combustion in the chamber. Dryzes were issued in rifle versions, uh, Jaeger versions, and even carbine versions. They could be fired very, very rapidly. When the average smoothbore musket could be shot about three times a minute, Dryzes could be fired at least six, sometimes eight times a minute. The beauty of it was, was that you could lie down. You could kneel. You didn't have to stand up and be ramming home a cartridge, presenting yourself as a target. Dryza eventually figured out a way to create a quick change system where troops, trained troops, could quickly replace firing pins within the Dryza bolt action mechanism in the heat of battle, which made it useful as a military arm. And by 1840, it's clear that this is something revolutionary, and the Prussian state orders 60,000 of these guns. The Dryza was the primary firearm of the Prussian troops uh, right up through the Franco-Prussian War. Now, at that time, this was 1871. You remember the gun was designed in 1841. The Dreise eventually was retired. There were sporting versions of it, and it was used for bits and pieces occasionally. However, once the metallic cartridge came in, it was pretty much toast. Very, very clever system. Heck, I would have been more than pleased to be armed with it in the 1840s or 50s. <laughs>